While the other modules focus more on technical parts of machine learning, we also want to give you an overview of other related topics. In the end, every topic deserves its own share of attention. In a way, one could say it's just fair to look at less exciting areas. Well, saying less exciting is probably not the best way to phrase it, as this sounds rather biased towards the cool technical stuff. Anyhow, you might have guessed it already, but we now want to talk a bit about fairness and bias within the vast field of machine learning. But what exactly is fairness? How would you define it? Let's look at recommender systems as an example. Recommender systems work well as an example as you most likely have already had contact with one or the other. We're talking about movie recommendations, song recommendations, any product that is suggested to you, well, even job ads tailored to your profile are based on recommender systems. Obviously, the concept of fairness and bias will hold for any other domain as well. So, what is fairness? It is common to distinguish between individual fairness and group fairness. Individual fairness means that similar users are treated in a similar fashion. For example, users with similar skills receive job recommendations within the same pay grade. Group fairness means that different groups of users defined by some sensitive or protected attribute, such as gender or ethnicity, are treated in the same way. In a similar manner, we define unfairness as systematically and unfairly discriminating against certain individuals or groups of individuals in favor of others. This could, for example, mean that male users on a job platform systematically receive job recommendations for better paid jobs compared to female users. But also the other way around, where female users would get better offers while having the same skills is considered unfair. And this example applies to any attribute, not only gender. But why do we have unfairness in machine learning? To understand this, we need to talk about bias, more precisely, harmful bias. Unfairness is commonly caused by societal or statistical bias. Societal bias refers to the divergence between how the world should be and how it actually is. Statistical bias, on the other hand, refers to the discrepancy between how the world actually is and how it is represented in the system. Another way to categorize biases is to look at levels within the machine learning pipeline where they can occur. So, for example, a bias can be present already in the data which we use to train our different algorithms on. For example, there are models for face recognition which are struggling to recognize women with darker skin tones as there is barely any data available in the training dataset representing this specific group. This bias is called data bias. But we can also have so-called algorithmic or model biases. These happen because our chosen algorithm or learned model is amplifying certain patterns by, for example, reinforcing certain stereotypes within the data. An example for this could be a recommender system which mainly recommends action movies to male users and romances to female users. Another bias which is apparent in recommender systems is the position bias, which happens when higher positioned items are more likely to be chosen regardless of their actual relevance to the user. In a similar manner, popularity bias refers to the bias where popular items tend to be recommended way more often than less popular item. Once again, regardless whether the less popular item would actually be a better fit. As you can see, there are many different types of biases that we should be aware of when designing machine learning models. Identifying the different types of biases is yet another research domain, which shows how important but also difficult it is to consider them accordingly. It is, of course, also possible to mitigate harmful biases. Bias mitigation strategies are methods that aim at reducing a certain type of undesired bias in your machine learning application. In this context, we can look at different mitigation strategies. Those strategies can be categorized into pre-processing, in-processing, and post-processing methods. Pre-processing methods mainly focus on the data. For example, data rebalancing tries to remove any unbalances within our data, for instance, upsampling minority groups. But pre-processing can also mean that we look at our data collection process and try to make this process as balanced as possible. In-processing methods, on the other hand, focus on changes within algorithms, models, or training procedures. Regularization can be a very effective tool during training of a model. Another example is adversarial training, where you aim at training a classifier to predict the sensitive attribute and then modify the loss function to minimize the accuracy of the classifier. But we can also work with the outputs of any given model using post-processing methods. This includes, for example, re-ranking results of favoring minority groups. Re-ranking results can also be done by a subsequent machine learning model that takes care of this. So post-processing methods do not exclude the use of further machine learning methods. But mitigating possibly harmful biases is not only a choice that you make in some of your models. While it is always important to think of the ethical implications of your algorithm and whether it is biased towards certain attributes, there also already exist some legal regulations. So this means that you sometimes will have to adhere to bias mitigation strategies to be in line with official rules. Regulations can be about many different aspects, however. One of our earliest examples in this course was the self-driving car. There was a lot of discussion, and still is, around the topic of who will be responsible in case a self-driving car gets into an accident. 
And even worse, what if other people are hurt in the process? In many countries, officials put regulations into place. The European Union, for example, designed the Artificial Intelligence Act, which regulates the use of AI in the private and public sectors based on four risk categories. Unacceptable risk, high risk, limited risk, and minimal or no risk. They also prohibit the use of AI in critical services that could threaten livelihoods or encourage destructive behavior. Something similar is enforced in Canada and the United States with the Artificial Intelligence and Data Act and the AI Bill of Rights and State Initiatives, respectively. But not only Western countries put regulations on the use of AI in machine learning, also Asian countries such as China are designing their own legislations. As the domain of AI and machine learning continues growing, the need for well-designed regulations also becomes more apparent. At the time of making this video, as an example, ChatGPT, a chatbot powered by a large language model, emerged as one of the hot topics and many countries were discussing about restricting or even prohibiting the use of ChatGPT. All of this is to give you a better understanding about the impact of AI and machine learning in our everyday lives. It is important to create awareness, especially as a fellow machine learning practitioner.